We're talking about entering July after a very tough week. And we need to breathe, and we need to be in fellowship, and we need to do some, as they say, as the kids say now, self-care. And we also have to be prepared for the long game. That if we think that what ails us started a day or two ago, we weren't paying attention three or four days ago or 30 or 40 years ago. If we think we're going to get it fixed in a day or two, we will be doomed to feel disappointed. We have to gird ourselves for the long participation. What are you doing? What do you want other people to be doing? What can we as a community be doing to win the war on democracy? It is a war that can be won. It is a fight that can be won. It is a discussion that could yield, if not consensus, at least supermajority agreement. When I was a kid, and we would study Nazi Germany, and it would seem like a faraway land at a faraway time. And I am not right now equating our current government with Nazi Germany. That is not my point. But when I was studying it, and when later under Tomas Ungvari at UCLA, I studied totalitarian regimes, I was relieved each time. I said, well, we have a majority system. You couldn't have a 30 plus percent coalition rule a country. That couldn't happen here. Thank goodness we have our system. But what happens if you suppress votes? What happens if you allow unlimited secret money? What happens if you suppress votes by how people can cast their ballot, by where they can cast their ballot, by losing their right to vote if they have ever done something really wrong and more likely to have been accused and convicted of doing something really wrong if they're a person of color? What if you change the rules of the system so all of a sudden, what if you draw the districts so that you don't have to have a majority to win a majority? And what if you do all of those things year after year? And what if each time you do them, you're able to pick up a few more seats that can change the rules further? And what if you're willing to be in coordination with people who shouldn't have any business involving themselves in the United States elections, who share some of your objectives, and they don't really care about American democracy either? And you do that brick by brick. All of a sudden, the confidence, I don't want to call it smugness, but the confidence that I had as a small child and as a college student, well, it's shakier. It's shakier. All of a sudden I realized that the red wall, which doesn't reach exactly 40% of Americans, it's 30 something percent of Americans, but nonetheless, it can govern the majority party, not the majority of voters, not the majority of viewpoints, not the majority of human beings, but the majority of power. If you can have that majority of that majority, a minority of power, can control the country.